All right, so now that we have the block out of this uh, this piece, we can start working on some of the details. And you'll see that I started kind of like adding a little bit more of the uh, the smaller pieces. That's what I would refer to as the details. And I have a couple of really cool techniques to, to show you that, um, you know, once you, you understand how it works, uh, the, the possibilities are endless. So you see, uh, I just went ahead and in this primitive container, so if I go in, I just added the same cubes that I had before. So another cube uh, that's kind of like cutting this area right here and another tiny one here. So I can just, you know, push this up and down, uh, but it's just a tiny cube. Um, so it's like a combination of multiple, very, very simple shapes that create complexity. Now, this is kind of like a switch. And if I go in, what I have is uh, another cube, and then I have a couple cubes just creating that sort of, um, I don't know, diagonal, but I can just move that around. You see, it's very simple, right? One thing that I wanted to show you is that if you work with these sort of primitive containers, so let's say this switch right here that is made out of uh, three pieces, right? The the main cube and two other cubes subtracting uh, to create that diagonal, um, yeah, that inclination plane. So. If you get out and you go to assembly mode, you can select it just by clicking once, not double clicking because double clicking will get you into the primitive or into the container. Uh, but yeah, just clicking it once, you will be able to move it around as a whole. So you see all of the pieces come with it. The same thing, if I select this one right here, um, I'm gonna be able to move it. Obviously in this case, I have all other pieces, so I can just select them by holding shift and moving them around, or I can also create groups, which is something that I haven't mentioned. Um, I haven't used them because I haven't found the, the need to use them, uh, but the groups are slightly different than containers. So this um, icon right here, those are containers. But if I want, I can group containers. So I can select this, 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 and uh, which is this. This is another thing that I did, like a new thing. It's just a, um, yeah, just a cube for a, another switch. And potentially, let's add this one as well. Right, so you have all of these pieces, which are different containers, and I can hold Control and G to group them. So now this is an entire group, meaning that I can select this whole thing and move this up and down, and it will move all the primitive containers within it. So that's a pretty handy thing. So I could do the same thing with, let's say, all these pieces and so on and so forth. But that's more about organizing your scene, and we're about to add some details. So maybe something to do a little bit later. All right, so the, the first really cool thing that I want to show you is how to create something like this this dial this right uh, on the left hand side this bit right here uh, because you know there's something about the technique that i'm going to show you that it can be used in a whole bunch of different ways uh, and i think it's really really powerful so we're going to keep it simple and try to recreate something like that all right so i'm going to right click and i'm going to click on another primitive and i'm going to select the cylinder that obviously is what we want um, by the way, you see I changed the color that is done uh, through here. So I just selected a different color so that you kind of like see the, the new pieces that I'm going to add uh, and it's very evident. Uh, but at the end, this material or this color it doesn't really matter. We're going to do this uh, in a different software anyway. All right, so I'm going to push this up. And one thing that I recommend if you want to follow with this technique or follow along with this technique, uh, try to maintain things within the, uh, the Z axis. So I didn't move it in the X or the Y axis. I just pushed it up so that you can see it. And I'm going to scale it down. So this is going to be the, the block out, really. This is the, the base of that dial right here. All right, so I'm going to right click and add a bit more resolution. I think that's pretty good. And let's go ahead and right click. And actually, before I do that, let's bring in some of the settings of this primitive. And I'm going to add a little bit of chamfer. I think that's going to give me a nice sort of shape for the blocker. And now let's go ahead and right click and duplicate it. So it's going to be exactly the same thing. Um, I'm just going to push it away from the center or the, the Z axis. So I'm going to offset it just so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to scale it like so and also in this axis. Now let's go ahead and jump into radial symmetry. So I'm going to right click on this object and I'm going to say, hey, I want to have a repetition. I want to have a radial repetition. So you have different options here. I want to click on radial repetition and that automatically, because I have this number of three, is going to create these three shapes. So you can see, um, you know, if you're creating, like, let's say, like a, a spaceship or something, uh, this could be like some thrusters or something like that. You can go ahead and blend in and create like a really nice shape. Uh, but that's, you know, <laughs> just, I just want to show you that the technique can be used in a bunch of different ways. So what I want to do is scale this down. And these are going to be kind of like the grip of this dial. So let's right click and I'm going to increase the repetition to uh, something higher. I'm going to go for maybe 32. Yeah, something like that. 
uh, and then I'm going to scale it down. Again, depending on your computer and how many uh, of these repetitions you have and also, you know, the, the resolution that you have, you might want to, you know, keep an eye on that uh, so that it doesn't make it too slow. Uh, let's go ahead and scale this down even more and then on the z-axis so i'm just trying to find like a nice blend between all of them and then i'm gonna push it back towards the center like so and i reckon i'm gonna remove the chamfer altogether and instead maybe let's try some fillet so it's like nice and rounded there we go something something like that that's pretty cool uh, but again because it is non-destructive uh, we can maybe if you want more of these ridges you can increase uh, the repetition or reduce it right uh, and you can play around with the the effectiveness of each one of these objects now i think this is, is pretty decent i can go ahead and increase the resolution a tiny bit that's pretty intense now um and yeah let's go ahead and press escape to get out of the primitive container and i'm going to select out this as my my object i'm going to rotate it in the z uh, sorry in the y axis and let's go ahead and position this and you see that in this uh, scene assembly the only scale control is proportional so i only have one one dot right here uh, but that's pretty much all we need I'm gonna scale this down that's roughly where I have it in the in the mock-up all right something like that um, and perhaps maybe we can add a little bit of a uh, some connection here so that it's not just that close to the base so let's double click on it and I'm gonna select this one right click and duplicate it it's gonna be smaller than that and you won't see it anyway. So it's just to push something in there. Uh, let's remove the chamfer. So it's a very simple cylinder. Like so. Let's click on escape. And let's push this one in a bit more. Perfect. So we now have that nice dial. So that's a really nice and simple technique to create uh, complexity and, and repetition and patterns and things like that. Um, another really cool thing that I have here as a new item that I added between the previous video and this one are those dials. So I'm going to show you how to uh, do something similar. I guess with the with the shape itself, is is very simple. It's just a, a cylinder that I added a bit of chamfer or fillet, as you can see here, and also a little bit of taper. So it's tapering down and I just duplicate it. Now, as I hover over this one, you'll see that there is like a green outline in some of them. That indicates that this is a link geometry. So that's a really powerful thing that I wanna show you. And it works um, a lot better from what I tried with the with the clay. So those are the tools that I showed you at the very beginning of this series. Uh, so we're gonna do some things with the clay. Now to do that, um, I think we can, uh, maybe just to illustrate that point, uh, we can try to recreate kind of like the keyboard or, or something like that uh, in this area. So let's go ahead and double click to get into the container of the base and let's get closer here. I'm going to select this primitive, which is cutting this piece, right? So do that. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on duplicate and I'm going to let's go ahead and push this in a bit and scale it down. So this is going to be the, um, the area. I'm going to hold control as well and push this one in as well. So this is going to be the area where the keyboard might be something like that uh, let's use the round tool just to round that up and I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna offset this to this side and maybe it's not that intense all right cool so something like this I think is working let's reduce the the roundness of this perfect so you see how simple it is to add this type of indentations. Um, now that we're at it, before I jump into the link geometry, let's go ahead and create the screen because that's something I haven't done. And, you know, it's again very, very simple. Just a couple of cubes, one subtracting this shape and another one creating the actual the actual screen. So um, I'm going to select this one, which is giving me that nice plane in here. Right click and let's duplicate that and let's push that in and I'm going to scale that down quite a bit. Let's keep pushing it in in this axis so that is in line with that original plane and let's just position this a little bit better i want to have like a, a nice and thick outline so that you know i think those those type of things make things look a bit more retro when you have an, a big bevel or a big bezel around around the the screens all right um i think i'm gonna push this even more all right and i think i want to also have a bit of roundness to it and I just realized that the roundness is in the in the wrong axis. So uh, that's an easy fix. We just need to rotate this 90 degrees, almost. And 
Oops, not 90 degrees, sorry. Let me just do it again. I'm gonna do it from the side so that it's a little bit easier to see. Alrighty. So that's better. Let's go ahead and now use the roundness. So you, you see, now we have a nice round shape. Maybe that is a bit too much. But it's just about of, you know, playing around with the with the placement and, and the proportions of things. Um, and honestly, that's what I, what I like about this process, that everything is very uh, non-destructive, very intuitive, just simple cues. You can go back at any time and, and move it. All right, so now I'm gonna escape or go back to the scene assembly. Again, because the idea is to have a screen and I don't want it to be part or, or I don't want it to blend with the base. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add a cube. There we go. And let's say, Let's round this up as well and add a bit of fillet. And I'm gonna rotate it like so. This is not a, a very precise angle anyway because of the original plane, but you know, it's close enough. All right, let's go ahead and place this a bit better. All right, and I think what we need to do is add a bit more roundness to it and a bit more fillet. So it's very, very soft and uh, very curvy. I think that's that looks good. that's gonna look good. All right, so that is pretty good. Maybe let's push this one forward a bit more. And that way we can really see the the angle of it, and that's what I wanna try. So from the side, holding Shift as I rotate, I'm gonna rotate this so that it's more in line with the original angle. There we go. All right, so that's not too bad. Uh, again, we can go back, escape, go back in, uh, and maybe actually I think we need to increase the the roundness of this, but because it's non-destructive. Very, very simple and very easy to do. Right? So now we have the screen. Like I said, that was pretty easy. And again, to, to wrap up this video, I'm going to show you the, the link geometry. And that's just another way of really, uh, you know, to add details in a very simple and effective way. Um, and I can also show you a, a breakdown of this part right here, which is also uh, an interesting one. All right. So instead of using the uh, non destructive primitives, I'm going to add clay. Um, again, clay is super powerful. I prefer to use this tool for more organic stuff, uh, but you know, it is a very powerful tool. So I'm gonna click on that one and you'll see nothing happens. I mean, it's inside. So I'm gonna click on a cube and I'm gonna push this one. And let's go ahead, let's push it a little bit further so that we can kind of like isolate it a bit more. All right, um, so with this one, this again, this is clay, but that means that we also, if I double click on this one, um, I'm gonna actually remove it so I'm gonna start with a with a new one. Um, I think I just made a mistake. So let me just go back a bit. So I'm gonna hit erase. I'm gonna press the spacebar, and instead let's go back in, and there we go. So this is kind of like starting over again. Um, yeah, I just made a mistake so that I actually press spacebar when I had it here. Uh, I want to show you the kind of like the primitive version of the clay. So um, just to summarize, I just selected the clay and I haven't pressed the spacebar. That's all. And I obviously moved it um, a little bit away from it. So this is going to be one of the, the keys of that keyboard. So let's go ahead and play around with the shape of this first. So let's just scale it down a bit. Uh, maybe we can scale it in this fashion. And maybe add a bit of roundness to it. And a little bit of taper. So you see uh, the techniques or the, or the tools that I have for the clay are very similar to the, the primitives. The only difference is that once I'm happy with this, and that's why I'm like spending the time making sure that this uh, looks nice and rounded and everything. Once I have this and I press a spacebar, that's it. I cannot uh, I cannot edit the fillet or the taper or anything of that shape, right? I can definitely use booleans and that's why it is really powerful. But um, those type of roundness and the edges that is kind of like set in stone. All right, so I think I'm gonna scale it down a bit more like so. And let's go ahead and press spacebar. So once you press spacebar, if I click uh, escape now, uh, this is our shape and this, you know, it looks very similar to anything else that we have in the sim, but this is clay, right? So that means there is no properties and it says clay, there's no properties. We cannot change the, uh, the roundness or anything like that. We can definitely do things like increasing the resolution if we wanted to, uh, but that's about it, right? Now, in terms of the link geometry, and that's the, the reason why I want to create the, or, or show you this technique with this object, um, because we have this shape that is uh, repetitive or like it's a, a pattern basically, we can um, use the link geometry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this first. So let's move it around, get closer, scale it down, um, maybe try it a little bit to set it in the right um, angle as well, push it down. And yeah, this is a, a big key, but 
I think it, it it's nice. So let's try. Oops, let's try something smaller. Yeah, something like this. And let's go ahead and push it. So I'm gonna start here from the right hand side. All right. Now from the top, if I hold Shift and go, oh, I won't be able to see it. Um, that's fine. Let's do it from this angle. It's close enough. All right. So. The, the way that link geometry works is again very simple all we have to do is right click and click on this make link so as soon as I, as I do that nothing happens again because there's nothing linked to this one so what I'm gonna do is select this one after I clicked on make link that's that's why now it is grayed out uh, you can unlink things at any time but we want to keep them linked and you have like a, a nice little icon in there I'm gonna click on duplicate and I'm gonna move this like so and you see now, I, as I hover over this, they're going to be green, right? So I'm going to select these two, right click, duplicate. Let's move them around. And uh, let's do the same thing again. Duplicate two and push them. All right. So now that we have all of this, let's right click, duplicate the entire line and push this down. See how we're going. Yeah, I think we need to adjust this displacement a bit all right that's not too bad uh, and I think I'm gonna do another line so right click and duplicate so same thing maybe from the side it will be a, a lot easier all right so that's not too bad we have the keys um, but let's say that you want to go ahead I mean these are pretty simple right but they're all linked together so let's say that you want to change something on this right so I'm gonna save just in case and I want to create some kind of like indentation or like a concave part or um, like a rounded shape on here so I'm gonna double click on this one to get in right so again if I select one of these ones they're all um, linked but they're individual pieces right um, it's like a, a slightly different concept than the under the primitive container that each one of these are individual pieces so I'm gonna double click to get in and in this one I'm going to click on clay Let's get a better angle here I'm gonna click on clay and that's gonna create that shape um, but actually what I want is a sphere so I'm gonna click on a sphere and I'm gonna reset it I'm gonna push it up so you see it is the same color uh, or it's highlighted meaning that what I'm whatever I'm doing here is gonna be blended with this one but of course I don't want to blend it um, all I want to do is subtract this round piece or this sphere so I'm gonna press tab and we get this ra round um, red sphere now push it closer and you see in real time what it's doing so that's kind of like what I'm after I'll make it a bit smaller so I can push it even more um, so you see it's just a tiny bit let's say uh, to have a little bit of a, a grip or or shape for it let's say some fingers where when you're typing or, or whatever uh, anyway so once you have this if I press a spacebar to apply this boolean you see it happens in all of the keys right that is because they're all linked so this is a fantastic way of um, you know affect multiple pieces that are the same uh, and tweak them so I'm gonna press escape on now again so now we have all these pieces right they're all the same so you can select anything really you can select this one and double click on it and you know if you do it again it's gonna do it in all of them that's actually not a, a bad shape I kind of like it maybe we can try that see this is the this is the the whole point of using this technique that um, as you do these type of things and you tweak things um, you know you get ideas and I I do like this one <laughs> quite a bit so I'm gonna right click and add a bit more resolution we go I don't know if it did it there we go okay so now we have uh, and the, the resolution is linked as you can see as well now uh, another thing that I want to show you which is you know for this type of hard surface is um, it's important but I don't use it as much but I think it's important to highlight it let's say if you want to soften these edges and because this is a clay tool rather than a primitive or a non-destructive primitive it will be a little bit harder uh, to do it because you don't have these sliders for the chamfer and all of that so if I double click to get in uh, you also have these other tools that have to do with the clay so you have the smooth tool and I'm gonna reduce the size a little bit and if I go ahead and click, you see it sort of like softens everything. So that's uh, maybe it's a little bit too intense. Let's reduce the strength and let's add a tiny bit of smoothing all around. And you see how all of them that are linked together are getting softer. 
All right, that's pretty much all I wanted to do. And that's kind of like the same technique that you can use to, to soften any transition that you want uh, when it comes to clay, right? Um, that That's really all there is to it. You see, we now have a, a pretty decent sort of block out with some details and um, some carvies into the model. There's a couple of extras that I haven't created, uh, but again, I'll, I will leave it up to you because it's more of the same is uh, things like this dial right here on top of the of the scanner, um, which you can do. Uh, we can actually duplicate this dial that we have here and put it in there with a slightly different uh, size. And, you know, the antenna is just like a tube, right? So uh, these ones are as well. They're pretty, pretty simple. So I'm gonna leave these extra bits like this area uh, up to you and, and you can just add or subtract whatever you want. I just wanna show you a couple more things. So the breakdown of this part at the top and how to create this type of like cables if you wanna do something interesting. Uh, because it's, it's just a fun technique that is not very obvious, but, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna go in just to, sh to show you what this is made out of. So it is a cube. It's pretty, it's pretty big actually, maybe let's reduce the size of this. So this whole thing is connected to a sphere, right? So I'm gonna select them both so you can see the original block out of the thing. So this is how I blocked out this piece, right? It's a cube and a sphere, All right? Let's undo that. Um, and then the rest of the pieces are subtracting. So if I go closer here, let me just select the sphere. Well, first we have this cube that has a chamfer, so it's creating that nice angle. Then there is a sphere inside. It's kind of like hard to select it now. Um, this one right here, right, that is subtracting it. So I can reduce or increase the size of this. Right, so this is a sphere subtracting that shape, right? Uh, and all I did, I just duplicated the original sphere block out and shrink it down and set it to, to subtract. And all of these um, pieces right here, they are triangles. So um, I use the triangle shape and yeah, it's just like about moving those triangles, but everything is non-destructive. So um, this one right here, this sort of rhomboid is made out of two triangles. So I can select one of them. And if I move it around, you see, it's just more of the same. Um, I think the only tricky one, well, it's not tricky, but um, this sort of like round area right here is just the, the cube that I have on top subtracting that part. So if I move this around, you see, that reveals that original block out. Uh, so this is just another cube subtracting that piece and I just added a tiny bit of fillet to get that roundness in here. Again, more of the same, very, very simple stuff and everything is non-destructive so you can adjust this uh, at any time. So I think that's um, that covers all the basics. The, the more that you get into these uh, tools and these techniques, the, the more fun you'll have because you'll discover different ways of using it. And I'm gonna leave this video here and in the next one, I'm just gonna show you the, the extra technique for like those tubes that I mentioned, uh, this sort of stuff. And I'm gonna show you how I build the rest of the details. And then we're gonna uh, kind of like export these so that we can start the texturing process. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.